If there is one thing that we've learned about the police from this last elections, is that they, as is with the government, maintain the monopoly on violence. But this time, the atrocities were far much more brutal. One woman claimed that she was raped back in 2007, got pregnant, gave birth. And then 10 years later, she was raped again by the police. The only difference this time was that she was raped alongside her sister. And that's not considering the fact that Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International documented close to 70 deaths in the August elections with cases of killing using clobbering, tear gas and live bullets. So let's get to it. My name is Les Mirungu and welcome to another round of Reality Check. Now, Kenyan Chief Justice Kenani Maraga in early 2017 released an audit report on the state of the criminal justice system. The being a fact of this aspect of uh, the report is that 64% of pretrial detainees in police cells had no reason for release recorded in the cell registers or the occurrence books, raising questions of their manner of release. To put that into context, 64% is almost two-thirds of the whole, which means that two out of every three people whose cases get filed at police stations are released without reason. Now, opposition protests in Kenya are mostly synonymous with violence and a bit of looting. But opposition parties came out this time around and they said that this was as a result of goons infiltrating the masses during this protest. Now, from that statement and from our previous episode, we can deduce that these people are malicious and violent ones at that. To my point now, in every 10 violent criminals that get arrested, about 8 of them are let back into the society. The judiciary suggests this to be because of the corruption in the police institution and also because the police do not provide enough evidence to the prosecution. But let's expand that train of thought. Only about 32% of police entries at any police station convert to charges in court. That other 68%, well that vanishes into thin air. Now this in perspective means that almost 7 in every 10 cases that are filed in any occurrence book at any police station in Kenya do not convert to charges in court. And of the three that actually make it, a majority of that number are petty offenders, like garbage thieves for example. To bring this all together, this means that the police exercise maximum discretion over the number of violent criminals living amongst us. This in a country where one in every four policemen in militia infested areas is working in collaboration with the latter even to an extent where guns and ammunition are supplied to these criminals. But this doesn't mean that the government isn't doing anything to increase the capacity of our police. Back in 2015, the government said that it was building a forensics laboratory, one that would cost us about 7.6 billion shillings and one that would have been hypothetically complete by early 2017. That didn't happen. But beyond that, if you were to say that the police are not as effective a security institution or even blame them for the rampant crime. Are your concerns misplaced? 